Hello, Mark Daniel Nelson here with Make Mine Music. Today I want to do a little chat about tube microphones. Tube microphones. What does a microphone that has a tube in it sound like compared to a solid state? It's three-dimensional. That's the biggest way to explain a tube microphone sound. Very three-dimensional. It sometimes is dark and mellow. Sometimes it's bright and sharp, but it's always three-dimensional. It sounds freaking 3D. Now, the thing about these old valve microphones, the German microphones, is that they get sick. And over time, after 50, 60 years, smoke, older tubes burning out, caps frying out, anything that went wrong with the actual microphones, they will change in character. Let's talk a bit more about the real deal, guys, the vintage line of two microphones. There's a C12 by AKG. There's a Telefunken 251, which was an AKG made mic that was commissioned by Telefunken to make. There's the Neumann series M50, M49s. There's the 67 and the 269, the U47 and U48. And there's a handful of other ones, but in general, those are the main great classic two microphones. You know, the U47 by Neumann has a bump around 3K, and then it opens up again at like eight or something. The C12 seems to be just incredibly open. It's very airy sounding, but it's just very open. It's thick all the way down. It goes real deep, and it's perfect for pretty much anything you put it in front of. I like the 67s and the 269s on vocals overheads. Those are a really cool mic because they're a little more, I wouldn't say dark, but they're a little more tamed where they can, you know, sound a little more punchy on sources that can get a little bright. My favorite room sound on orchestras is the traditional decatree of M50s. Now the Neumann M50s, like all five series, like the 56, 53, 54, they all have the AC7012. For anyone that doesn't understand what the M50s are special for is the sphere that goes around the Omni capsule. And the cool thing about it is you got the capsule and then there's a sphere that goes around the capsule. It's a physical polar pattern, basically. And what it does is, as a piece of plastic, creates this cardioid focus on an Omni capsule. So the frequency response, I can't remember what the crossover is, but it's basically the high frequencies are cardioid and the low frequencies are omni. Now, the thing with orchestras and why you probably would use an M50 for an orchestra is because you want to get a room tone, but you also want to be able to get the sound of the orchestra that doesn't sound like too washy because there's a lot of rooms that track orchestra that just sound way too wet and way too kind of just muddy. The M50s with their hyper sphere is the fact that you can get a lot of focus and a lot of detail from the orchestra and still get the sound of the room. Now, the first mic I ever purchased that was like a big deal for me was a long body 1956 Telefunken badged U47. Just like the 251 Telefunken didn't make the microphone, they just put their badge on the Neumann mic. Now, when I got the U47, I used it on everything. It was kind of like one of those things where you just go out and just say, okay, put that, put that, put that on it. Put the U47 on that one. Well, that'll sound great on the U47. You just wanted to use it on everything. And after a while, you're like, man, this curve, just everything sounds like this thing. And it's great, but it really did add up in not a very pleasing way. So there's a reason why people like to switch out microphone tones. My favorite applications for the 47, obviously, are the vocals. That's my number one favorite mic still to this day. But I also like to use a pair on piano. They have a really good mid-range, makes the piano punch hard. I love using it as a mono drum mic. Again, there's something about the mid-range that pulls out a lot of the grit and the hair of a drum set. Sometimes I put it right over the drum set, and sometimes I put it five feet in front of it. 
And by compressing it, the sound of a U47, U48 in cardioid on a drum set just is beautiful. It has this fur and magic that I can't get really with any other mic. It doesn't do it with the C12. It doesn't do it with the 49. It doesn't do it with the smaller pencil condensers. It just works. I'm a huge fan of C12s as well. I think it's my favorite piano mic. Again, it's one of those things where it literally captures a humongous amount of information. For a piano that has a huge wide range of frequency, and they're fantastic. On drum overheads is amazing. On Leslie, it's unbelievable. On room mics for guitars, it's outstanding. You know, Jeff Emmerich used to put a C12 in a room for bass amp amplification for the room mic, put that in figure eight, and it kind of collected the dump of the ambience of the room. There's so many applications you can use on the C12. You know, the 251 and the C12, they're very similar mics. They're both made by AKG. There's a little bit difference, obviously, with what it's doing, but in general, in my opinion, the 251 is just a little more magical than a C12. And then in that same family, we can talk about the Sheffield Lab mics. It was built by Steve Hazelton and Doug Sachs at the Mastering Lab for direct to disc to come up with the most high fidelity tube microphone on the planet. It's line level, meaning you don't need a preamp. There's no transformer, which means it shoots incredibly fast and very, 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 very beautiful sounding. It's just a gorgeous representation of the very, very, very best C12 microphone ever put together. So the Sheffield Lab microphone not only is insanely rare, I think John McBride has one, and I think Bill Schnee maybe still has maybe five. There are probably only 15, 20 left in the world. I don't even know. They look like somebody built them from Radio Shack, but they are probably the best sounding microphones on the face of this earth. Before the USA Telefunken Company came out, I was a young 20-something-year-old, irresponsible, crazy kid that loved microphones and loved audio equipment. Ended up getting a Telefunken tattoo on the back of my left arm that to this day I still see going, it's passion. Now, when I started working under Bill Schnee, the first thing he did was he said, you know, what the, what is, what is on your arm? Now, I didn't know this until I came out and started working under him, that he was super passionate about Elam 251s. And I mean, there's pictures of Bill recording Jeff Picaro with four or five 251s on toms. There's a wonderful picture of John Lennon in the studio that Bill Schnee recorded vocals with, a 251 on John Lennon's vocal. That was just a rocket ship into my love for the way that two microphones sound. And the only issue with it is the fact that most people can't afford them. And not to make this an advertisement for flea microphones, they are outstanding. I've had three M50s by them, a pair of C12s, 47, 49. They all sound amazing. Another cool little guy that if you can't get a U47, but you'd like to get an older Neumann that sounds like it, now they have a CMV 563. Now this microphone I used for a couple years while engineering for Ken Kelly. Ken had one and we used it on a ton of different vocalists, Jason Mraz, Ken's daughter Colby. It just seemed to work really well on a lot of different singers. So if you're in the market of looking for something that is still an old vintage Neumann that you want the sound of a U47 without spending the 18000 try to look into a CMV 563. They're fantastic. And before a lot of companies started re-releasing their own clone version of microphones, there was a handful of newer two microphones. One of them that comes to my mind would be this Solid Tube AKG. Now this guy, I've had, I have two actually, I've had for, I don't know, 14, 15 years, and it's been modified since then. I think you can find them for $400 on the internet. The difference is I've ended up putting two 12AX7 Telefunken tubes in it. 
and it's very unique sounding. And the bottom end is massive, which in my opinion is absolutely crucial for a two microphone. The other microphone that I liked at the time and that are still really inexpensive is the Audio-Technica 4060. Now this guy probably goes for $650. And I used to have that up against C12s and 47s and it did win multiple times. Take a peek at those two microphones. They're relatively inexpensive and they sound fantastic. Let me close with this. Now recording in digital has been kind of a new wild west the last 20 years. Technology has gotten better, converters gotten better. With two microphones, it just makes the job way easier. There's something special about all two microphones that just work great. On brass, on orchestra, on drums, on piano. So that's my wrap for today. That's my love for two microphones. I love them. What they do versus a solid state, there's nothing wrong with the solid state, but it just makes it magic. And that's why grabbing a good old two mic seems to always win. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day.